Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, today I'm coming to you from Waikiki Beach, and we have my good friend uh, Matt Swaim, who is a radio professional, uh, joining us for the whole hour. I get to talk with Matt for only five minutes once a week on the Sunrise Morning Show. I have to get up at 12.30 in the middle of the night to talk story with him. I let you sleep in, Matt. Well, thank and you for that. We'll be, we'll be back with more of Matt Swaim. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure uh, I have as my guest today, Matt Swaim. He is a professional radio personality. He does the Sunrise Morning Show, but he's also very uh, involved uh, with the uh, Coming Home Network, which is one of my favorite. It's one of the first shows I really watched on EWTN, The Journey Home, because it's just so rich in, in understanding our faith. Um, but the thing is, Matt, Matt is here with us, and the biggest thing you need to know about Matt is he's a diehard uh, Boston Red Sox fan. No, although no, stop it. No, it's it's no. a since it's something to do with red. It's the Cincinnati Reds, and he knows that I'm a Dodger fan. And who would have thought at this stage in the season both teams would be undefeated? I, I'm telling you, and uh, we, the the tables are it's it's like a it's like the season <laughs> hasn't even started. No. <laughs> well, I, I I warned Matt that this is not this is going to be airing months after we record it. But right at this point, we're at the beginning of the summer, and there's no baseball. What are we going to do without it's the boys wild. of summer? It is wild, you know. It's and baseball. You and I both know, uh, aside from tandem surfing, it is the most Catholic sport like in the universe. So it's it's a it's okay. It's a, what do you mean by that? It's the me. most Catholic sport. Tell me about that. What oh, I mean a hundred things by that. It Tell has me. the inter. It, it has the the proper interplay of sound and silence, just like the mass does, right? It, it, as as Catholics, we're we're supposed to be individually calling, uh, you know answering the call of our baptism, but we also are part of the church, just like every person on that team is part of the same team, but they all have to stand at the plate as an individual. And I'm just scratching the surface on that bear. And of course, we all want uh, to come home, right? Like in the name of the network, coming home. We all want to make it home. Of course, you got to get to home plate. Okay, what's the difference between football and baseball? Um, baseball defense has the ball. Oh, I mean, I, <laughs> that's <laughs> interesting. Not. It's true. Football, yeah, there's the yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, the, the difference is, is that uh, I grew up listening to baseball on the radio, and it made me want to get into radio. And so it's always been my first love. Always really? been my first love. So, yeah. Who was your announcer? Uh, we had Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxall when I was a little kid. Um, both of them uh, both of them broadcasting Hall of Famers. Well, when um, I was but, a, you know, but you had Vin Scully, though. Oh, I, mean, I know. Another I wasn't, legend. I wasn't a, when I was a kid, I was a Giants fan. I, I was an altar boy, oh. and we all got, we all, t all got to go from Santa Cruz up to uh, – uh, the Giants and it was uh, a Candlestick Park back then. Candlestick no? Park, yeah, but it wasn't. I wasn't a baseball fan until I started listening to Vin Scully and Don Drysdale. Oh man, how do, how can you not be? Yeah, uh, I listen mean, to Vin. So, so the difference between football and baseball. Football's going to war, and baseball's all about going home. But I think the yeah. two of them kind of go together, right? As far as our Catholic life, we're in the midst of the spiritual warfare. Well, I mean, any sport though. Really, I mean, I mean, think about all the things that you have to. I mean, there's no. I mean, with, with our faith, we're given the Ten Commandments, we're given the Beatitudes, we're given the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the virtues. We're told what the seven deadly sins are, but until you get up to the plate, you don't know exactly how you're going to have to apply those tools, mm. right? I mm. mean, it's. I mean, we got. I mean, Joey Votto is a scientist at the plate for the Reds, you know, future Hall of Famer. And he knows exactly what you're supposed to do with the when he gets to the plate, but he has to know based on the situation how he's got to apply that in the moment. And then that's what we're all called to do. There is no there's no cut and dry one single answer to into all of this. I mean, it's it, you you know what you're supposed to do to be a saint, but look at every saint. Every saint did it differently. Yeah, and you know, but but we prepare for those moments, right? For if we're, if oh, we're, sure. Yeah, we know you know, I was with Cindy yesterday, we <coughs> excuse me, I injured my, my hand playing a surfing. The other day, and I said, I'll play bocce ball with you left handed, which was, I, I, I nixed that idea. But when we got there, we were watching some guys uh, playing catch, playing football, I was thinking, what a wonderful thing it is by the human being that they can throw a trajectory like that and kind of know where it's going to land. But you do yeah. that only by practice. 
Yeah, you right. got to practice hard to make it look easy. Yeah. So what is that? What does that say about our Catholic faith? Well, I mean, it says the same sort of thing. I mean, you know, have you ever been around? I mean, I know I have um, people who are like, I don't know what they've got going for them, but that person might be a saint someday. Mm -hmm. And you can't even put your Thank finger you. on it. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, Bear. That's, that's a plug for your show. <laughs> um, but the uh, you see somebody and you, and you know that they have something that you want. And, and this is, of course, the hope of all of us. I mean, this is the Pope Francis talks about this is the most powerful form of evangelization we have, right? Is for people to look at us and say, that's what I want. Um, you know, and, and we talk about the faith being caught uh, and not just taught. Um, yeah, but again, we talk about being practicing Catholics, but are we really practicing? I mean, mm. you can go to the, the the old saying is that, you know, practice makes perfect. But I had a, a high school football coach who told me that's a lie. Practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can show up at any practice and still lose 75 to nothing, mm -hmm. you know, on Friday night at a high school football game. Um, but are, are you engaged? Are you paying attention? Are you learning the playbook? I mean, are you? Mm -hmm. Are now you you're practicing? making me make it sound like football is the more Catholic sport than baseball when we all know it's baseball. <laughs> well, but it is about practice, isn't it? It's like, you know, are you yeah. like when I, I had my son Jeremiah's here, he just moved back to the islands. He surfed 85 foot waves, but he just didn't go out there and do that one day. He spent his life since he was a child. He had dreams of riding big surf. He had pictures on his walls of big waves. He bombed big hills on skateboards, but, and, and he would practice on bigger and bigger waves. And, before that big day, he, he, we would, that summer, we would go out, paddle out, you know, a quarter of a mile out, grab a boulder underwater and run underwater. He was preparing for that. So I really like this thought about practice. Well, we think practice about St. Patrick. Yeah. yeah, think about St. Patrick. He doesn't like, he's not hanging out. He's like, what is this, Thursday? You know what, maybe I'll convert Ireland today. You know, mm -hmm. no, I mean, he's got a whole lifetime of praying in the fields for that country, and, you know, and preparing for the the fields and thinking what do the irish people need to hear specifically what do i how do i take everything i've learned about being a slave in ireland and use that to shape my approach to these people i mean you know just walk into the room and be like hey i'm here everybody and, has to listen to what i have to say now and he was definitely spiritual warfare he went into a, into a really difficult pagan situation extremely too. pagan yeah and so we we have to be we have to be prepared for that eventuality too we have to and and you and you do that i love the way you said it you, you do that by practicing your faith and so you really are practicing when you get up in the morning and you have your pray the liturgy of the hours or you, you go to mass or you go to confession, you practice the sacraments, you, you get formed in the faith by reading the catechism or, or, or the early church fathers or whatever you're doing. You're practicing because you are going to come to the plate, right? There's gonna, yeah, I mean, there are moments every day or, or there are big moments in our lives when you're going to have to be this is, ready. We're in the National League, Bear. This is not the American League. Even the pitchers have to bat. You know, you're not gonna get a, you're not gonna get out of that plate appearance. You're gonna have to be called to step up to that plate. It's mm -hmm. there's no avoiding it. This mm -hmm. is the National League. And I know that I know that uh, you know in 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 my life, uh, in the mornings I get up, I have my prayer time, and then I pray, Lord, let me let me be a witness. Let me let me share your gospel. And sometimes it's just the most un interesting appointments take place. Right? What is your experience of that? Well, I mean, see, so here's the here's the thing. It's hard for me to remember exact ones because I can remember the ones that I plan, but the ones <laughs> that happen organically, right. they they just kind of sort of surprise you. Like somebody will say something to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I remember more often like things that I say to other people that they did that impacted me. And 99 times out of 100, when I say something to somebody about how you know they really reacted well in a situation mm -hmm. or they really just said the right thing, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're like, I have no memory of what you're telling me I did. <laughs> really? Right. How cool is that? That the Lord's yeah. using you. I mean, I remember my mother once was in a department store, and this woman had said to her uh, something about, oh, yeah, my horoscope today said such and such and such. And my mother didn't say, didn't, didn't follow up on that. Well, what do you mean by hor horoscope? Or do you, do you believe in the horoscope or, or, you know, or, or respond you know, I find my, my direction and my faith is in Jesus Christ, you know. And she, she felt bad for a long, long time that she didn't take that opportunity to share the gospel. We have to be aware of little cues like that, that we, so that, that we can share our, our faith with but, others. But here's the other thing, though, is that you don't know. Like, maybe that woman all day had people saying to her, yeah, the horoscope's amazing. Are you an Aries? And maybe that was the one, she was the one person who didn't say that's amazing and it caused that mm -hmm. person to think you mm -hmm. never you see i think we we mm -hmm. often think that it has to be some big planned thing but sometimes if you just 
if you just do what you're supposed to be and be where you're supposed to be, it's not always about the execution. You know, this is, see, this is, okay, this goes back to baseball too. Good things happen when you put the ball in play. Mm-hmm. Just put the ball in play. Mm-hmm. You know, um, hey, get, just get, just get the, just hit the ball. Stand back. there and take pitches all day. You're gonna strike out looking. Yeah. Just put the ball in play. Yeah, and see what see what the Lord does. See if the Holy Spirit shows up. We're talking with Matt Swain. I get to talk with him for five minutes once a week on the Sunrise Morning Show at twelve thirty in the morning. That's after midnight Hawaii time. But I get to have Matt on my show for the for a whole uh, forty four minutes. And uh, he was one of the first people I had on my show back in the day, and he and I was on his show maybe eight, nine years ago. I don't remember how long ago. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, you guys, go to our website, deepadventure.com, subscribe to our newsletter. And, Matt, where can they find you at the journey home? Yeah, uh, come to chnetwork.org for that or sunrisemorningshow.com for the radio stuff. And CH is, stands for what? Coming home. CH dot? chnetwork.org. For the Coming Home Network. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our our focus today is on baseball. We're talking with uh, uh, Matt Swain, one of the number one fans of the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, but actually, Matt, I want to I want to back up a little bit. Matt is the is one of the the radio DJs for the Sunrise Morning Show on on EW10, and also he's with the Coming Home Network. I want to back all the way up. Tell us about your personal journey of faith. Uh, how you how yeah. how did God make a Matt Swain? I'm pretty curious. There's not many. That's like a very you. good question, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you made a Bear Wozniak, I thought he was all out of tricks. But um, no, so. I was raised in a very strong Christian home um, and, and my family, I got all four, uh, at the time of this recording, all four of my grandparents are living um, mm-hmm. and I've got my parents both living and everybody's a Christian, everybody's still married. I mean, I was formed in a very, um, very loving and foundational home. I uh, grew up in the 80s. Uh, evangelicalism was more of a, uh, I think a unified kind of force in the culture at the time and, and that's what I was formed in. I got saved as as they would say in evangelical circles in um in a vacation bible school in 1986 and how old were you how old were you i think it was seven Mm -hmm. it was six or seven right in there my birthday's in july i can't remember exactly what month of bible school was in but it was during the summer um I still have the tract, the little tract with the five finger gloves and the different, you never seen those things where like the dip fingers are a different color. Like the green represents new life in Christ. The red is your blood of the blood of Jesus. The black is your sin. And anyway, I still have that track. I never got um, that one. Yeah. Um, some people have it in bracelet form. Hmm. Um, but yeah, very strong Christian. And then it was in my sort of, uh, early teens, uh, we were going to a very vibrant church uh, that was my family's whole social system, and our pastor had an affair with his wife. Uh, he had an with affair the, with, with his woman, wife. Had an, had an affair with a woman who was not his wife. Yes, <laughs> okay. I should. Be, uh, had an affair, uh, mm. cheated on his wife, and that made me 
as a young man really question all kinds of things. Like the, I realized How old were a you? lot of, um, then I'm maybe 13, okay. uh, probably uh, around that time. Yeah. Is when this is really kind of coming to coming to bear. I, I'd have to go back and check. I just, that whole era is just a lot of things going on for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it made me think: Do I believe this because I trust the people who are telling me this, or do I believe it because it's true? Um, and and that's you know, that, that's when the crossroads hit for me. Um, and that's when I really started reading the scriptures for myself. And of course, you know, if you're a teenage boy and you want to read the Bible for yourself, you go where the fire and the explosions and the seven headed dragons are. So it's a lot of revelation and Daniel and stuff. And you figured all um, that out easy. I, mean, I figured it out perfectly. Right. We picked, we figured out who the Antichrist was going to be and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but in that, uh, you know, I was going to public school. Um, and I knew that what the culture was selling me through the public school system in terms of like a philosophy was just, it was just a lie. You know, that whole self-esteem movement, like you're all amazing, individual, beautiful unicorns. And also you're nothing but a bunch of chemical reactions, <laughs> you know, like but you get a participation weird. trophy just for showing. Right. Up. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. a weird time to be a kid. I mean, there's always, it's always a weird time to be a kid. So I had this, I had lost all my trust in mainstream, sort of like consumer driven, polished, you know, look good for the camera Christianity. But I also knew secularism was a lie. And so I went, it, the only place that a kid could go into Christian punk and metal and alternative into the underground where you've got these guys who are praying the Psalms and singing the lyrics that sound like the psalmist where they're hitting the range of human emotions. Mm. And, and that really resonated with me. Um, you know, and, and I found through time that a lot of those people were reading older books than whatever the latest Christian bestseller was. And, and that starts, starts you on a path towards reading, you know, guys like Augustine and Chesterton. And I, I've heard of those guys. I imagine you Augustine, have, you know. Rookies, Jesterton. They're they're veterans, man. Yeah, I love those guys, man. If this is baseball, those are the guys that you could only get the baseball cards of in the old like. It's like Babe Ruth or packs. even before. Right. You know, like the right now, Wagners. I look out my window down at St. Augustine's Church. And in my oh, prayer yeah. my prayer area, my man cave, the one that I have in Florida, I've got a big old t- a tin picture of Chesterton so it can be outside on my my lanai, you know. I just love those guys. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you found well, those guys. For me. They were formative for me. I mean, really? That's about, how old were you when you were reading them? Well, I mean, I started into that. So I started, I mean, the real way I got into it is I was playing in Christian, you know, alternative rock, you know, bands and stuff. What um, were you playing? What, also, in, what instrument? Um, bass, guitar, singing and stuff. Um, writing my songs, you know, trying to figure out my theology on the fly. Uh, didn't really have a coherent theology, but mm-hmm. I was working at a family Christian store, which I don't think they're even in. I don't think that I think they're all their storefronts have shut down now. Mm. Um, but I was also running the Christian music section, you know, in this, in the family Christian store, we're getting in mm. all the obscure Christian punk and metal bands in, and this is a heyday for that stuff. If you mm. don't realize, mm-hmm. um, but I'm also, I got my employee discount. So I'm trying to read up on the Christian classics because I know that these mm. guys I listen to read Christian classics mm. and so th- these things are happening. So I'll see a reference to certain authors, um, like, you know, we'll say Chesterton or yeah. or Thomas Akempis. And I find that you can't get all of their stuff. I'm thinking, well, that's just old. It's probably out of print. Um, but then you realize the secular bookstore down the street has these guys, mm. which is a strange thing. Uh, you start to realize uh, mm-hmm. that over time, all these older titles, because in our Christian classics, we had like Charles Spurgeon. Right. They didn't go like, back further than 400 yeah, years. Yeah. C.S. Lewis, you know, guys we like love. that. Right. And, and, yeah, I mean, they're, they're 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 very competent, but they don't go back back past four or five hundred no. years. Yeah, no way, no way. I mean, I could read about Corey Ten Boom, and I could read about yeah. you know great books. Some of these classic, uh, you know, Eric Little from Chariots of Fire. You know, these witnesses of faith. But they didn't go, go back, back very far. You know, Thomas Akempis too. You could have got that probably in your in your Protestant bookstore. I but did the last, get it, but it was but, missing a book. Yeah, but it's missing the the, the Eucharist. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's the, missing the final, the, the most important part. Volume. Isn't that interesting? That it's, you it's and like, I both figured that out by ourselves, but it's like, yeah. It's, it's like watching something. Star Wars and they end it before they blow up the Death Star. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're wow. missing the, Euchar- the the whole, and they don't mention it. It's just like, just not there. Yeah. That yeah. tells you something, doesn't it? Well, but it also tells you something about the nature of at least my form of Protestantism, Protestantism anyway, is that you take what you like and the rest you say, well, you know, 
they had some things right. They had some things wrong. Let's keep the good stuff and move on. Yeah, how yeah. can you, like when you read the early, I was talking with someone the, the other day and we were, we were actually wa watching a, 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 a series on the early church fathers, just watch the first 40 minutes or so. And he goes, yeah, some of that sounds pretty good, you know, but some of it, yeah, just uh, uh, couldn't be right. Well, this is the, these are the apostolic fathers. They were taught by Jesus or the apostles that were taught by Jesus taught them, but you're rejecting their thoughts on think the Eucharist. Of the most and, respected <laughs> Protestant, you know, thinker you can think of. C.S. Lewis. Think of, yeah, think I love C.S. Lewis. He was the first person whose books made me go, made me chew. Yeah. I had to read each line twice. <laughs> why do you, why do you trust him? Because he lived in the, you know, early 1900s and he had some really good thoughts about things. He, he's an authority, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you not trust Clement of Rome, who was like in mentioned in the St. Bible, Peter's Sunday school class, and mentioned in the letters of St. Paul? Why right. would you not trust Polycarp, the first reliable disciple account of, of martyrdom? Yes, disciple of St. John. Disciple, disciple of St. John. Yeah, uh, yeah, whose other friend, St. Irenaeus of Lyon, was like one of the smartest scripture scholars in the entire early church who wrote. He 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 has references to nearly every book that would one day end up in the New Testament, which like is 250 years later. Yeah, and that's something. Why would you not trust uh, those guys? Saint Irenaeus on on heresies yeah, against it, heresies. Yeah, in in the early days too, it seemed like there were so many heresies, and it, and, and it seemed so terrible. Uh, he was basically going against Gnosticism, you know, and and, and Paul Gnosticism was the big one. Yeah, yeah, pa Paul battled um, the Judaizers and and some of the Gnostic stuff too, but. Um, it helped us really. The the heresies helped us really go. Mm, it made it made us define our faith with more clarity. We didn't change our faith, but it it made us uh, become more clear about you know the nature of who Jesus is, the nature of salvation, all of that. So going Let's back. Let's say I'm early, Joey Votto. Let's say I'm Joey Votto and I'm facing Clayton Kershaw. I'm watching the tape to say what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, and the next time I go to the plate, smarter. Mm -hmm. Because we've, and that's what the, that's what church history is. You're like, no, that's not how that's not how you articulate the relationship between Jesus's divinity and his humanity. Let's put that to the side. Look at why we got, we got that wrong and get it right next time. Right. Let's have a meeting about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's have a church council. Exactly. And decide it. That's a meeting at the mound. The yeah, that's the mound. it right there. Yeah, and we know that there was a uh, there there's sometimes it, in in sports the fans get a little bit rowdy. We know Saint Nicholas a little bit. Took a little yeah. swing at Arius at some swing. point. It was a rhubarb. It was a rhubarb. <laughs> the first, the first bad Santa. You know, Saint Nicholas yes, took, a, took a swing been. at him. But, um, <clears throat> but the early church fathers, um, for me, I, I just got to got got off getting to talk with Mike Aquilina. We just got off uh, oh, that interview. Mike's my buddy. Oh, Mike's fantastic. He's your buddy. Oh yeah. You get to hang out. He's on our show every week, just like you. Oh my gosh, I love Mike, Mike Aquilina. He's unbelievably great. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, he knows Dion. That's true. He wrote Dion's, like the majority of Dion's new album. I know, it's so cool. Well, we got to use wow. some of his music on our Long Ride Home TV show. That's because, awesome. That's because of the Mike awesome. Aquilina. But, he, but Mike, uh, you know, when I go, we, you know, after we go, we, we do our, our two-day workout or whatever Sunny and I are doing, surfing or whatever. But in the evenings, we'll walk a mile to this beautiful Fort Derussi Park and we'll, we'll Maybe I'll have a cigar. We'll play bocce ball or something. I have a book with me. Like right now, I'm reading Scott Hahn's newest book. But I'll sit there and I go, I just want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike Aquilina. I just want to read and then write about what I read, you know. But yeah. I got to have He's, Somebody wrote, once referred to him as like the, the family historian of the Catholic Church. That You can find out about your family by looking through the records of the courthouse. Or you can just ask your uncle and he can tell you the good version of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I love, you know, and, and you know, the. I love Mike Aquilina. I, w I got to speak with him once. We're, we're at the Kansas City at a Ben's conference. Oh, yeah. And it was billed as the theologian, the surfer, and the exorcist because they had, had an exorcist there. I thought it was quite a— They all walk into a bar, right? <laughs> they all walked into a bar. We're talking with Matt Swaim. I get to be his guest on the Sunrise Morning Show. In fact, uh, when I first began to uh, have a, an apostolate, I went and visited Matt Swaim at his you show. You surprised me. I had no idea you were coming. <laughs> And they're, and they're, who's this new to my doorstep? Well, I heard if I came that I would, I would get to have a coffee cup or something. I think I got a free mug or maybe a bumper sticker. Well, we had security, but you've got a black belt <laughs> and you got through it. <laughs> but I loved meeting you. I had this oh, this great. instant just love meeting you. We're talking with oh, Matt yeah. Swaim, and, and he's also with the Coming Home Network. What's that website? Chnetwork.org. That's chnetwork.org. And the uh, Sunrise forever. Show is what? 
for yeah for that you go sonrisemorningshow.com sun as in the son of god we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure That's right. deep adventure ministries is grateful to notre dame federal credit union for underwriting the bear wozniak adventure on ewtn notre dame federal credit union provides car loans mortgages sba loans and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, women love our show, our Long Ride Home TV show and our radio show. When we go to events, uh, a lot of times I just speak at men's conferences, but when we go to other types of, of events, it's the women that come up first and say, I love your show. I got to get my, my husband to watch your show. I got to get my son to watch your show. And so we, I just want to talk to your women for a minute. Come be part of our ministry. Go to deepadventure.com. Um, when you go there, uh, you can uh, subscribe to our newsletter. You can forward that newsletter to your son or to your, to your brother or, or, or to your husband. Bring them to the website. There's a, we have something called Bear's Man Cave which is a real cool thing. It's, it's where we have a, we have a, a it's a secret Facebook group because so they can't join by going to Facebook. They have to come to our website. And you look for the sign that says stop, warning, don't go any further. That's where you click that button and you can sign your husband up or your son up for the man cave. But we, we challenge each other, we equip each other, we inspire each other with our posts. But we also have every two or three weeks randomly at different times we have the Zoom video chat meetup. But we, we've been doing long before the, uh, the uh, coronavirus, I guess. But it's just the greatest group of guys. And, but, we're, but none of us are, we're all knuckle draggers. It's like the cave of Adullam where, where King David uh, hid out from Saul. And it said all the misfits, all the people that owed money uh, hung out, came, and came to the cave. And God gradually formed them into bad, mighty, mighty warriors. So we invite all men to come to the cave, but women, come and be part of our ministry. Help, help, help us share this message with men. Uh, Monsignor Gino at the Vatican, we got to meet with him. He was in charge of the new evangelization for the English-speaking world at the time. He said, you guys are doing the hard thing. You're doing the hard thing. You're trying to reach, not the choir, but reach reach uh, men who maybe have never even been in a church. So come help us with our ministry. We're talking with Matt Swain. He is one of the DJs of the um, Sunrise Morning Show on EWTN. I get to join him once a week. And uh, he's also with the Coming Home Network. And he, we've been traveling through his life journey a little bit here. And we got up to the point where he start, he found uh, you, you, were, you were looking for old books and you couldn't find Thomas a campus and you couldn't find, I don't think you could find Augustine. So what happened next? Oh, yeah. I mean, there were a bunch of others on the list. Uh, of course, uh, Chesterton being the big one who was the engine for me. But, um, you know, but others like looking, reading Chaucer even. Chaucer's not like heavy theology, but you're looking at this and you're like, there's a worldview here that's informing what Chaucer's writing about that I don't have. And yet these people are all going on a pilgrimage to Canterbury, you know, and it, right. all these kinds of things that were sort of shaping uh, Interesting. Uh, for me, a lot of fiction. Flannery O'Connor was big on really this. beautiful. Um, and I always say, and this is a much longer conversation. She's the one who actually broke me of Sola Scriptura, not like any kind of like theologian necessarily. It was her because her characters just, they were so into their own private interpretations of scripture and they went off like in crazy directions in her fiction because of that. And I'm like, well, I've seen that. I went to Bible college. I'm from Kentucky. I see how that can happen. And so the scriptura course, means what, Matt? It means that the Bible alone is your sole rule of faith. You don't need a Pope. You don't need a council. You don't need a preacher to tell you what it says. You can look at the Bible and know what it says. And I already kind of knew that didn't work, but reading Flannery O'Connor and her crazy misfit, you know, Southerners. What would be, what would be one or two people. books you would recommend by her? Well, I get her short stories um, mm. and get her prayer journal. Mm. Um, and the one I'm going through right now is called Good Things Out of Nazareth. It's a collection of her letters. Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. And that's the point, right? <laughs> that's that's the a G.K. Chesterton almost kind of upside yeah, down yeah. thought, right? 
Um, but yeah, so so these people are forming me and they're ultimately shaping my imagination. Tolkien is huge on this for me. Um, and uh, you, you start to find out that you're thinking with a more sacramental imagination. So, Because this is one of the controversies we ran across when I was playing in bands, right? We'd be playing at some churches. We actually played at some church who had a youth group coffee house night and the coffee house was called Adolam's Cave, believe it or not. Oh, that's because cool. it was supposed to be this place where all the misfits could come and hang out and listen to rock and roll music yeah. and then hear the gospel. So cool. Um but we hear have these preachers come up to us afterwards and be like, Man, I'm so disappointed. I thought you guys were a Christian band. You didn't give an invitation, you know, at the end for people to receive Jesus. I'm like, Well did you hear in our songs? I mean we thought our stuff was pretty Christian. And then there was this whole debate going in the larger Christian music circles like what makes music christian you know you got amy grant pod and mxpx and switchfoot kind of crossing over um but are they really christians and that got me asking questions about truth and beauty and goodness um mm. as as what does Four that all very, mean very catholic words yes exactly um so so that's that was a big part of it so uh, ultimately my imagination was converted to un understand and receive truth and beauty and, and goodness together um, mm -hmm. as opposed to just saying, well, I've got the truth or I should be good or I enjoy this kind of art. You, you put them all together and that's, that's, that's there's a harmony to that. Um, mm. So yeah, that, that was a big part of it. And again, you know, kind of breaking myself of this sort of individualism that's bred into me almost more of an uh, more because I'm American than because I was Protestant. Very interesting statement. What do you um, mean by that? Th by that, I mean, there you want to be able to well, for instance, to look at the tradition, like we were saying earlier, and say, okay, I, being a, you know, 21st century guy, can who take never a look read, at the Who doesn't read Greek. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, I'm seeing, you know, this guy got a couple things right in like the third century, and sort of this guy, and some of these English guys are pretty smart. And so I will take a look at the tradition, and I will decide where the tradition was right and where the tradition was wrong, and that's where I will, you know, build my worldview. As opposed to saying, what is it that made Augustine Augustine? Mm -hmm. right what is it that's forming him am i smart enough to go in and say if augustine were in this room right now would i walk up to him and say you know augustine you have some good stuff to say but let's be honest you know you're not very progressive it's so yesterday you know i mean we've <laughs> we've evolved on these issues so we're very last, complicated people so now. you're a very one-dimensional <laughs> right. And the, the ego of that, like, think about that. Like, you and I are very complicated people, but, you know, those guys, St. Paul is a one-dimensional guy who just wasn't able to think outside of That's his, right. he you know, outside of his own, you know, presuppositions. Like, yeah, he, he you know, so if Jesus was just bolder, he would have ordained women, you know, right? And, you know, Jesus mm -hmm. knew exactly what he was doing. He was in control of every situation. He's the great builder. You know? Even the one where he was crucified, he was in control. Praise you know? God, Matt. Wow. Um, so yeah, it, you know, having that sort of sense that like, you know, because I'd gone from, you know, United Methodist as a very young kid to Nazarene, which is a smaller denomination, to Free Methodist, which is smaller, to like this sort of like house church Bible study. It actually became a house church accidentally. I didn't mm -hmm. want for it to. But I kept on going smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller groups and realizing if I even reduce the church just to me, it's still going to be run by a sinner. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Yeah. So what are you gonna do? Don't go for the one but, that's that's that you like the best. Go for the one that's true. Well, the other, the other thing about that, Matt, is like you know, I I was raised in the church, and I and I was I left for about a dozen years or so. Unfortunately, it was during the time of my, when my children were in their formative years, so sure, was, sure. so I regret that. But uh, I just remember um, finding the early church fathers and bringing it yep. back. But when I when I read the cat, I read I read uh, actually um, uh, Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber. Sure, and sure. Uh, then I and then I went to and I got the Catechism, and I read Scott Hahn's book on the Eucharist. But when you read Augustine, you read Aquinas, and you read uh, the Catechism, um, what's so interesting about it is first of all, they're very, it's very humbly presented, right? It's a more proposed sure. for our belief. It's not talking at you. But what's beautiful about it is how it all hangs together. You know, Scripture is so beautiful. You know, the the the, the allegories from the Old Testament, how you see them brought forward in the New Testament, and the pre-shadowing. And how the, the consistency of, of, of it, it's, it's, it's amazing with so many different authors inspired by the one Holy Spirit, all, how it all hangs together. But then you take with that 
uh, the catechism to help you really understand the fullness of that revelation, and you would syllogize based on the on the revelation of Scripture to what, if that's true, then this must be true, and if that's true, then this must be true. I love Aquinas. You know, he'll say, so what is, what, what is, what, what, what about this? What is this true or what is this? And then he gives the one or two or three very best false uh, answers. And, 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 gives and he him, gives them better than the people who hold yeah, those he, positions yeah, to give them. He presents them in the best possible way. He doesn't set up a straw, a yeah. fake straw man and knock it down. He presents that, that, that position in the best possible way. And then he says something so beautiful to the contrary. And then he quotes a scripture. And then with that scripture, he syllogizes uh, with other scriptures and with, with, the, with the philosopher, as he calls him, Aristotle, uh, or, 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 or others, Augustine, he loves, and, and he quotes the early church fathers or, or, and uses reason to build his case. And so when you read the catechism, which, you know, I teach every morning, I, I love the catechism because it's not, it, it, it makes perfect sense. It all knits together. It, it fits it's like so often I went to the NR the the NRB I think it's National Religious Broadcasting yeah yeah, yeah 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 that's mostly a Protestant gathering right that's what it is mainly and so as I went went I went from booth to booth to booth it was like a different brand of Christianity a different emphasis or even a different uh, a, a totally contrary teaching was there you know where whereas us who are on the EWT network we know we have to go through a discernment process and it has to be consistent with Catholic teaching but in, in Catholicism if you're true to the Catholic teaching. You're either true or you're not. You don't pick and choose. But but the thing about it is you were saying, I'm going to be my own pope. I'm going to choose what I believe or what I don't accept. The beauty of it is when you read the Catholic catechism, it's all yes and amen. You can you, you feel it in your yeah. heart and you know it in your mind that this makes sense. We're talking with Matt Swaim from the Sunrise Morning Show. I get to be on your show every Monday morning, um, which is why I didn't do my ocean catechism today. I slept in after being there on, it, on your show at just past midnight. And he's with the Coming Home Network. Where can they where can they find you, Matt? Yeah, chnetwork.org or sunrisemorningshow.com. chnetwork.org. We have over a thousand conversion stories to view or read for free over there. So And you just had Keith Nestor on. Awesome. You just had Keith Nestor. We did. My buddy I, Keith. I beat you to the punch. Had Keith him on and I first. were at the same random Christian punk and metal festival in in Bushnell, Illinois in 1993 together. Did or you no, know, sorry, did, it was 1998 together. Did you did you meet him then? Did you know him then? I no, no, had no he's, idea. What a great story! I had I had him on about two years ago, and he's going to be on my show again. But what a great story oh, about, about his conversion! Talking with Matt Swain, this is the Bear Wasik Adventure. We'll be back with more. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with my guest, Matt Swain, my co-adventure guide for the day. He is the host of the Sun, one of the hosts on the Sunrise Morning Show, seen on EWTN, and he's also with the Coming Home Network. I'm trying to get you to. And he's a here. He's a professional radio person. We're into our fourth segment. We've done 33 minutes, and I still can't get you to finish your story about your conversion, so we can talk about the Coming Home Network. But so, so tell us more. So you, you, you went to this. You, you found Flannery O'Connor. You began to find that. What? Tell us. All tell of us them. All of them. Essentially, the synthesis of, of truth, beauty, and goodness in the Catholic Church. And you know, a lot of people read like. I feel bad saying this because these are like people that I know and have pleasant interactions with and, you know, have had, uh, you know, amiable correspondences with over there. You mentioned Mike Aquilina earlier and, um, you know, I d eventually discover like a ton of his books. Um, but, you know, like the Scott Hans and the mm -hmm. Steve Ray's and the Carl Keatings and all these. Those are very late developments for me. Most people that I, I didn't even read until after I came into the church. For me, it was the fiction writers who seem to be telling the truth about the world. Mm. Um, and uh, again, that's. That, that's essentially what did it for me. Um, and, and once I had kind of gone through this sort of house church movement where it kept on getting more atomized and it was down to just me, I was like, like you know Just what? the truth. We have the, we're the ones that really know the truth, right? They yeah, get, I mean, it gets smaller and smaller that, and smaller. Is the road really that narrow? No, it's not. Mm. Is it so narrow that only I fit? No, it's not. Um, and, and yeah, just having the humility to do that. I finally went through our CIA uh, and uh, was actually married uh, in the December that I was in RCIA and came into the church that following Easter. So hard to believe someone would marry you, so, but that's that's. I, it, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> somebody did. So. How many kids do you uh, have, by the way, Matt? Just got the one. Just got the one, and uh, he's uh, as of the time of this taping, patiently awaiting uh, the restrictions in the D.C. area to be such, so that he can have a first communion where we can also have a party. To celebrate oh, how beautiful. How you know, cool. that sacrament of, inici of initiation. Well, tell you know, us now, how, how did you, so that, so this was your, your process of coming to the church and sure. then how in the world do you get to work with on the coming home network? I love that. I love, uh, I love the journey home. It meant so much to me as I returned yeah. to the church. Well, it was through working in radio. I mean, my major at, uh, at Asbury College was media communications with an emphasis in radio. Everybody's like, you know, don't get into radio. Radio is going to be done by like the year 2000. And all like, you're going to do is sell, no, but, sell radio but, advertising anyway, right? That's what right, you do. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, no, I was like, no, but radio's radio is like the purest, most personal medium out there. And uh, and I, I got into that. And then I took a couple media ethics classes, and I was like, well, maybe I won't go to the media at all. And mm. then I went out and lived the rock and roll lifestyle for a little bit. Um, but then as I was coming into the church uh, and, you know, preparing to marry my wife, she's like, you know, why don't you call the local Catholic radio station? You've got a Catholic radio station that's been on the air two, three years and just see if you could volunteer. Uh, so I volunteered. Um, I, I called him up and the, the station manager, Bill Levitt, uh, said, you know, can you come down to the office and meet me? He's got a very good old radio voice. Well, he um, heard your voice, though. You have a radio voice. Well, more importantly, he heard and he was so excited. He's told me this later that I was. He, that there was somebody listening to this new Catholic radio station who was under the age of 85. <laughs> uh, but second of all, someone who actually had like some experience doing radio. So we yeah. hit it off immediately. And wow. within a year or two, it started the Sunrise Morning Show. Uh, and through that- Really? So you yes, were there at that yeah. that early? Wow. What yeah, is, I, uh, I kind of co-founded it. Well, let me I ask discovered you, Anna Mitchell. Oh my gosh, that's enough yeah. right there. Let me ask that's you this the, that's question. The, that's the crowning achievement in my career is discovering Anna Mitchell. So. Here's an off the wall question. You know who Esau Wood is? Uh, I do not. Oh, okay. Because I took a class in uh, in radio in, okay. uh, in at Baylor and I really wanted to do radio. Oh, but okay, so he's like a Baylor guy. Well, yeah. Well, e Esau Wood, Wood saw Wood with a Wood saw. One day Wood, wood saw, saw Wood saw Wood like no other Wood saw, Wood saw Wood. And I never saw Wood saw, saw Wood like the Wood saw, Wood saw, Wood saw Wood. That was the thing we had to do and enunciate it wow. and emphasize things like, the proper uh, way. I thought you, I thought that, that was basic. Woodchucks. So you really didn't yeah. go to a good radio school, I guess. No, if you no. Didn't learn a, that. a lot of ours was like execution and theory. Like they were, they had us going like super old school though. They like, we were actually splicing tape with razors and taping it together you know did you have Just to use that radio voice that goes up at the end hey everybody. no i didn't although <laughs> I, I did get enough into the broadcasting i mean i have a deeply if i go hang out with my family in tennessee for a weekend annie knows and she'll call me on another next day uh, when i come back on the radio she'll be like you you hung out with your tennessee relative you can hear this she can hear the. you had to get rid of the totally twang huh well i mean it's just it's just yeah. You, you want to be understood by everybody. Yeah, you know, I was lucky. I was from California, it. but I was going to school in Texas. All those Texans had to get rid of their... All the Texans. Poor so guys. So talk story with us about the Coming Home Network. What a great privilege it is, is to be there. Yeah. What's so, that? Yeah, what so do you do there? What's it all about? 
Um, I'm the communications, well, the outreach manager. So I help, you know, create and focus all of our outgoing content. Most people know the journey home uh, as kind of the big part of that. I produce that. So I line up all the guests. And the guests and, are and journey home. home. Journey home is people who um, are coming coming to the church from every background imaginable. Yeah. Every single one uh, or come back to the church like, like, you know, people like yourself. Yeah. But you won't have um, me on the show. You said I'm number 200th on the list or something like that. You're no, you're in the you're in the upper 150s. I think. <laughs> 150s. No, but I'm it's amazing. One. So, yeah, what's what's funny is, uh, you, you know, a lot of the people we have on uh, have been ministers and other Christian traditions, Protestant pastors and things like that. Yeah. But what's wild is, is just how many I mean, you hear so many you know, things about bad news and people saying, well, you know, the church is sloughing off members and well, we've got like 45 shows, new shows that we do a year. And you look at, I, I was at a wedding and talking to some family members from Chattanooga who said they had like 70 some people come into their one parish at the cathedral. Um, and I and bet I, they're real true to the catechism of the church at that. Right. But that's but, the key, but that's one parish. Think about what happens every Easter. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this Easter things were delayed and mixed around, but I mean, some of these people have 45 amazing stories in one parish. So and yeah, it's, they'll it's let, just wild. They'll let you it's in, wild. they'll let Matt Swam in the church, they'll let every, anybody in. They'll you know? let anybody. So everyone they'll should feel welcome to go to RCIA. What but is RCIA, story, by the way? Oh, that's the, it's the right of Christian initiation for adults, but I've, I've, I've made different acronyms over for the years. All right, let's I've, hear them. I didn't have the world's greatest experience in it. Let, let's hear it. Let me hear, let me hear, give I, me. I referred to one of them as the Reading Christians Insult Academy because, you know, I'm like, I've got like a minor in biblical studies and they're like trying to tell me that, you know, the essence of Catholicism is that God loves you. I'm like, yeah, I learned that in second grade. Yeah. Tell me about the Immaculate Conception. But that was the humility it took, it takes to become like a child. Oh, yeah, you got to, yeah. you become like a child in order to enter into the church. Yeah. That's... Uh, but yeah, no, the Coming Home Network, the, the media aspect, the outreach aspect of it is, is kind of just the outfacing part of it, the bulk of its pastoral care with people who are Googling us and coming to us and, and looking for help on the journey. Because it can tough, be real lonely. Tough transition. If right. you're if you're going to some church and that church is your entire social network, mm. you know, that small group that you're involved in, that music ministry you're involved in, and you're seeing stuff and none of your friends are seeing it, maybe your spouse isn't even seeing it. Mm. I mean, where are you supposed to go? So we have like you know, new people joining every day um, who are active in some kind of Protestant ministry and, and just looking for looking for help um, because they've seen something that they don't know how to. Well, like you and I are talking about the church fathers, like they have never even thought about anything related to what Christianity might have been like between. Well, well there was 30, there, the Bible fell out of the sky. The, Seventeen. Yeah, the Bible fell out of the sky 2000 exactly. years ago. King James translation. Self-interpreting, by the way. And then nobody had anything to say until 500 years ago. Uh, you know, that, that's what it was like for me. I, I didn't know yep. there was anything past, you know, there was just this big kind of black box. Yeah. So how, what would you say to people right now who are saying, what you're saying makes sense, Matt, and I've been thinking about considering more about becoming a Catholic, or I'm right at that point where I, I need to or want to. What would you say to them about how they can make that transition and how the Coming Home Network yeah. can help? Well, I'd say for us to definitely visit our site because, you know, all the, everything we have is free. I mean, unless you want a hard copy of a book, right? All the videos, all the resources we have are free. And especially for those people who are, might end up losing some kind of employment if they become Catholic, um, you know, if they're working in some kind of ministry. Uh, but I would say this, you know, in terms of our pastoral care side of things, you can Google the answers, right? The catechism is freely available. You can look up the answers to like the doctrinal questions. But the, the transition, questions. how do they handle the transition? Yeah, but but you need friends. You know, you need people who, what's amazing is, and one of the reasons we have people tell their stories, you like this, oh, here's a baseball story for you. I've heard, we I like had, baseball. You do so too. So Toby, Toby Cook works in the front office for the Kansas City Royals, world champion Kansas City Royals. And he was a Lutheran elder working in the front office for the Kansas City Royals, and he found a story on our site that was of a guy who had also been a Lutheran elder who had worked in like media relations. And just seeing somebody whose story was similar enough to his was enough for him to be like, you know what, I can do this. You know, and sometimes that's what it takes. Just and hearing you, somebody who's like you. And you have to be true to the, to, you know, once you've come to the understanding of the truth, you have to be true to it. 
You have to be yeah. true to, to the teaching that you've heard. And and I, I love Keith Nestor's cover. His, his, his book cover is probably the best one I've ever seen in my life. It's like, I just became a Catholic the first year. You know, how do you handle the transition? And that's the, that's the beauty of Stephen Ray's book. My, my whole family had become had a deep conversion in the charismatic re- renewal long time sure. ago. My dad became a Catholic deacon while I kind of drifted from the church. He sent me Stephen Ray's book, which is a beautiful book, Across in the Tiber, written to his father about yeah. why he made this change. It, was a, it wasn't even meant to be a book. Full of footnotes. It's a great book for people to consider. Is there any yeah. other books that you would recommend? I know you have them on the, on the network. But we have a lot. I mean, I think for depending on what your issue is, I think you know for a lot of people, Rod Bennett's book, "The Apostasy That Wasn't," because a lot of people I love that whole era, of, oh. all, whole era of history, because they're like, well, obviously, after the last apostle died, there was no real authentic Christianity until Martin Luther came along. Right. Rod Rod lays it out and is like, no. The the history <laughs> of the early church, or the other one would be Mike Aquilina's book, "The Mass of the Early Christians." Beautiful, this is really solid for just like giving you understanding. Like, how did the early Christians worship? And he just wrote a new book uh, called, I think, uh, "Work, Play, and Love" about the mass work, too. Work, work, yeah, yeah, it's so great. We got to go, Matt. We're out of time. It's it's the time flies. This is yeah. like my show. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, you give me five minutes, I gave you forty four minutes, dude. Now it's forty four minutes and ten seconds. Felt We're like time. five. <laughs> it felt like years for me, but it drug on. But we got through it. But that, thanks for being on my show, Matt Swaim from the Sunrise Morning Show. What's the website for the Coming Home Network? Yeah, chnetwork.org. Come say hello. Yeah, and you can find out more about us at, the, at deepadventure.com. Until next week, you know what I say? I say, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you, and then I say aloha. Will you say the aloha with me? May the breath I of the it. Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. 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 <laughs> Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.